well, it's been a while since uh, I made a um, video with this uh, scan tool. It's an OBD1 scan tool. Um, can ignore the connection link there with the head units. That icon doesn't always work properly. With uh, Android phones and other devices, that does to show that it, uh, it, it's green and connected uh, when it's when it's connected to the scan tool. Just the head units. That feature doesn't work properly yet but that doesn't affect whether it connects or not so that's my head unit there Android 7.2 and that's my scan tool running right now I'm just gonna stay here in idle and just go through it with you um, what the scan tool now does it's been updated since um, the last time a few times since the last time I made this clip I made a, a clip about this so you've got your trip computer that tells you where you've gone and so forth um, how far you've travelled and how many litres of fuel you've used and so forth and uh, you got your arm um, you can do diagnostics on your van so I'll go ready it's going to come up with um, error 12 <clears throat> now to explain what that error is it's telling me that there's a problem with the um, sensor at the uh, distributor and uh, I actually went through the effort of getting another distributor and replacing it and so forth and then I got error 12 again and I was like well that it can't be what the problem was so that distributor is now used in my other van um, but after reading the manual uh, what I should have paid more attention to was uh, it means that there was a delay from the point when you turn this key here, the ignition key, from the point when you turn that, if you turn it and you have to hold that for more than two seconds before the car starts cranking over, that's what the problem is. And uh, being in winter, I can hold that, I can turn that ignition and hold it uh, for probably a good 30 seconds before the car starts to crank over. So that's where my error 12 is coming from, not the distributor. So it's a good, uh, a good, you know, um, indication of why um, you got to really pay attention to the manual. Okay, um, everything here is pretty, pretty much self-explanatory, isn't it? So you got your ignition at 12.3, which is right. Uh, my incoming air cool um, control sorry that's my idle how much air is coming in through the idle control rpm well it's cold so it's ribbing at 1250 rpm but as the car warms up once it gets past 45 degrees the idle will come down to about 900 and then when it gets to about 60 degrees the idle will come down to about 750 um then my valve airflow that's the just showing a voltage reading of um, how much air is coming through the front air cleaner my O2 sensor I'm not traveling so obviously and it's in open loop at the moment with the TE1 plus E1 there while the, while the van is warming up it's always in open loop but uh, sometimes it goes into well not sometimes but often it goes into open loop while driving uh, that's, that's just the van looking after itself that um, if you're going full throttle or something like that in the ECU can't manage um, all the different uh, sensors to know what to do with the mixture it goes into open loop which is kind of like a standard setting and uh, my, my volts is um, nearly 14 there but my voltmeter over here says 14.2 uh, this is obviously the the stereo is using power so um, actually no the ECU is getting its reading from the ECU so there must be the drain on the ECU that's why the voltage reads differently here must be uh, some sort of a resistance there anyway that's, it still shows me that the it is charging it's doing its job 
and the bottom one is um, airbag, which I don't have one, uh, but I still have the um, sense. I still have the option on the ECU, so the ECU is still giving a reading for the airbag, even though I don't have one. Okay, so error 12, for instance. Let's say we wanted to go and have a look at what the problem is with error 12. You've got a. Um, you can actually look up error codes on the device now. And it shows you there what your um, engine control module, ECM power supply, but uh, it can also be a delay with the engine starting. And that, so you can go for all your different codes there, of what all the codes mean. Your earlier error code before 88. Yeah, so that's a fantastic thing to have. Uh, with the Toyo Com OBD1 scan, you have the option for fan control, so you can um, monitor the power fans under the bonnet and um, you can also manually um, control if you want the vans to stay the fans to stay on all the time say for instance if you're overheating and you the fans are cutting in and out you can tell it to stay on so the fans don't cut out until it's cooled down again let's see if I can go into there and this one's telling you about it it's how to connect it all up and how to test it Tells you what everything else here is, what AC, IA, all those different meanings, what they mean. It's all in here. And you manage data. You can uh, choose to export it. Uh, say you've gone for a trip, you want to have a look at it, you can export it. And uh, you can take it back to the computer. And um, it shows as a spreadsheet, and then you can have a look at your spreadsheet form of this and um you know if you're a bit cluey that way and um try and work out why something happened during a trip like maybe the car stalled or something like that but you got to go in again and you want to try and find out why it did it that's good for doing that amongst other things your bluetooth and it, you got your device features so um, you got your channel mapping speed channel it's all controlled through the OBD1 settings and you can um, this is where my scan tool doesn't have the extra wires for to set up um, custom um, sensors but this is where you do it so you got all these different sensors that you can wire up and I don't have that so I'm not really too worried about that either because my van already has all the sensors that's needed this is for if you're wiring up, if you're connecting the OBD2, uh, OBD scan tool uh, to the van or to a car and doesn't support um, the TE2 port uh, to get readings, then you manually set it up and put in all the configuration and so forth. Then you've got your quick connect there and that's about it. Um, if you wanted to, uh, like just for instance, you just wanted to monitor your RPM while you're driving and it's a bit tricky to um, look at all those you know all those um, cells there all at once and you're just trying to say all right what speed am I doing and you're trying to work it out and you, then you find a spot it there to save your time having to just spot it you can just make it bigger or you can make it a gauge as well or oh, should be able to ah. Used to be able to. That's something that not doing it. So must have been removed from the last update. Used to be you could have a gauge. Uh, you can switch between night mode and day mode with it. So that's for the, that's for daytime to make it easier to see the. Um, display but I find the the lines between each cell make it harder to focus on which cell to look at so these are 
lines in between maybe one day will get increased so you can uh, identify which cell is what quicker uh, okay so yeah if you want to monitor your RPM while you're driving just put on RPM and you can just keep on focusing on your RPM while you're driving you know Um, or your temperature that's if you wanted to keep an eye on your temperature while you're driving also has a, um, a warning beacon that comes on uh, at 90 degrees uh, I changed mine to 100 um, but my temperature gauge barely ever gets over 76 so I'm pretty well right I just when I'm climbing hills uh, steep hills my temperature might get up to about 92 so I changed that setting to 100 because uh, with my van, it's, it's normal reading is 84, and uh, it's, it can get up to 110 in the happy zone. You know, on the gauge, it still reads um, in the normal area on my uh, dash, so or my cluster. So um, just to not have to hear that beep beep sound all the time, to warning me that I'm getting too hot. I did that. I can monitor my temperature anyway with this tool, which is fantastic. Uh, otherwise, I'd probably be pulling over the side of the road somewhere, not knowing um, if I should or not. Or probably no, I pro probably wouldn't be pulling over to the road somewhere. If, I, if this van got up to 100 degrees while I was going uphill somewhere, I would pull over. So, it's a big savings there. And oh, it's off on. I don't know what this is for. Oh, that's uh, doing the, um, that's doing my engine test. That's a new one to me. You can see the OBD light flashing as well. And, uh, this is doing, yeah, showing up my error codes there. And oil. That's all standard, there's no, Overdrive is for the transmission, there's no errors in the transmission, oil level flashes for any um, oil problems, and I, there's no oil problems there. Um, but I do have that error 12. Okay, so uh, I think I've covered everything here. You can choose, obviously, mine to try, I say. But, uh, and it does have an auto um, ECU scanned uh, option it now so it automatically connects the it's taken the trouble of when you plug the tool into your car you're not having to go through the features um and select selecting um what type of um ecu to use and having to set up the bluetooth and so forth the tool this the application automatically detects the bluetooth comes up on the screen shows the optional bluetooth uh, and then it will automatically identify which scan tool you have and then it automatically pairs it with the application and you're up and going it's very um, effortless now to get it all connected so uh, that's about it I think that's everything else happening there and if I wanted to switch between say with my head unit that is if I wanted to switch between say music or GPS or something like that it's still functioning in the background uh, I'm not gonna put radio on but let's get navigation just for the just for the process okay so I can still switch between so GPS is running in the background GPS will still be giving me directions and the scan tool's working, or I could go through. GPS signal lost. Oh, there you go, see. Um, you can go through. I don't want to start anything that's going to start playing music because that'll be a copyright thing on on YouTube. 
Um, but anyway, you get the drift anyway. So I can switch between everything and I've got my, my scan tool still working, my GPS is still working. If I was listening to the radio, that would also be working. And if a phone call came in, I can still talk with the Bluetooth uh, through my phone, hands free, and it doesn't interrupt with the scan tool either. So you've got two Bluetooth devices functioning at the same time, and it's quite happy to do that. Okay, so um, yeah, well worth getting uh, if you've got a Toyota that. Uh, you want to have a scan tool to function with. This is obviously my um, Previa Tarago. Uh, so, yeah, this is it all functioning. Um, there is a there is a limit to ECUs with these um, Previas that um, not everyone's ECU will support this. I had to track down one for a 94 and uh, I found two, so I bought both of them. One as a backup, uh, which I actually use in that van right now. So I've got both vans that I can um, constantly monitor what the van is doing while I'm driving around. Well, anyway, that's uh, yeah, that's um, up to speed. That's what the tool can do now. So um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.